It's the Ford Maverick, and this one is the XLT, and it's the 2.5 liter hybrid. Now, a few small things about the one in behind me. I did mention it's the XLT, but it has the optional XLT luxury package. Looking at the wheels inside the Maverick, there are two choices available. So it's either gonna be 17 or 18 inch. XL, XLT, XLT generally is gonna have 17 unless you go for one of the added black appearance packages. Larry, it's gonna be 18 inch on top of that. But series of different style wheel choices that are available. Tons of different things available aftermarket, whether you're looking at the wheel or the rubber. So if you wanna take this thing off road, you've got that flexibility. No, this one is the hybrid version of the vehicle, which means we are looking strictly at front wheel drive in Canada. And then as we get into the regular gas version of the vehicle, that's when we get into that all wheel drive variety instead. So available drivetrain is going to depend on whether you're in Canada versus the States, if you're in the XL, XLT or Lariat. So few things to take into account when we look at it. Doesn't matter if we're in the XL, XLT or Lariat, we're going to have LED headlamps there and something that's continued through the 22 to the 23. We don't have fog lamp availability inside of this thing whatsoever. And that's one thing you're gonna notice, like even looking at the differences between the Maverick, the Ranger, the F-150, et cetera, the Maverick essentially is like a stripped down bare bones truck instead. So we're not gonna get technology like forward sensing systems. You're not gonna get a front facing camera, things like that in any trim level of the vehicle. I want to say thank you so much. It's crazy that I hit 20,000 subscribers. So glad that you guys are finding value from the videos that I'm putting out. If you have any ideas for any other videos that you'd like to see, definitely feel free to reach out and let me know. And if you're looking at picking up either a Maverick, Mustang, or any other Ford Lincoln vehicle, you want to connect with Formula Ford and Pickering, they'll be able to help you out putting through a factory order. Getting underneath the hood of the Maverick, really straightforward. Just to the left hand side of the pedals we've got a release we're just going to pull that twice but this thing on just a regular prop bar but super straightforward to pick that thing up now we've got this and i said i'm excited because it's the first time i've actually seen the hybrid engine for the maverick in person but very similar to what we're going to find inside of the escape we've got a 2.5 liter atkinson hybrid Combined numbers, we're looking at 191 horsepower and 155 pound-feet of torque. So not the most powerful option, but if we were to bump it up to the 2.0-liter turbocharged instead, it's the exact same capability we're going to find inside of the Bronco Sport. So that 2.0-liter has 250 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque. Like a teeny little bit of a difference. And we can tell that it's a hybrid because it's got all the high-voltage orange wiring throughout. If you're inclined to do some things yourself, easily top up fluid, check and change your oil. You definitely want to make sure that you're at least doing regular oil changes inside of your vehicle and then regularly maintaining it on top of that. Minimum, just like regular, cha like regularly change your oil, but that scheduled maintenance is definitely there for a reason. So you are looking at a small break-in period for this vehicle. Looking at the warranty inside the Maverick, we are looking at a basic, so three year, 60,000 kilometer and then a five year, 100,000 for the powertrain. And then we've got different elements when we look at the hybrid components and things like that. But warranty is all over the place. And I mean, obviously if you have the two liter, the hybrid components just won't be covered off because you don't need it. But at a very minimum, just make sure you're taking your vehicle in for regularly scheduled maintenance, minimum doing regular oil changes at the same time, just to make sure you're getting the best possible life out of your ride. There are a few small differences from 22 versus 23, a few new color choices. The Lariat's only available front wheel drive for the hybrid down in the States now. There's a few small things on the interior. And other than that, it's relatively unchanged. For comparison sakes, that you can see how big the Maverick is. I'm six feet tall. <laughs> I've got a ton of head clearance space over this thing. So the Maverick is not a tall truck by any stretch. It's actually, you can see it along the side there, that hot pepper red Bronco Sport. It's pretty much the same size as that. So not tall and it's not difficult to get in and out of the first or second row. Super straightforward. But there is some interesting technology available inside of this. We do have the five digit number pad available as an option right from the factory. You can get it installed aftermarket. So one of the benefits there is that you could lock the doors by pushing the bottom two buttons. But if you want to get inside without your key fob on you, you can also enter in a five digit factory number in order to make it happen. 
Now on top of that, side view mirrors, slightly different too. So this one just has regular glass on it. And then we've got like a little convex mirror along the top in order to adjust that out. So slightly separate glass, it is power for the main part. And then it's a manual adjust for that convex instead. I gotta say, I kind of like the seats. The like, just the basic look of them is so cool. And we've got this like nice, like orange highlight, like this beautiful orange stitching. One thing about the stitching, like it follows all the way throughout the seats in the first and the second row, but it doesn't follow through at the steering wheel. So we do have a vinyl wrap steering wheel as an option inside of this thing, but it's got this blacked out stitching instead, which I mean, it still looks pretty neat, but we've got some really cool orange highlights that go all the way throughout, like on the door handle, even through the vents. And then we've got a few different parts like storage trays down in the center stack, which have an orange look to them as well. It's, it's pretty cool looking, but let's go through some basics of what you're going to find inside of this ride. So along the driver's side door, we've got an unlock lock button, but we've got all of our basic controls, like our side view mirror control. And then we can control our front and our rear windows on top of that. Along the door, we've got a bottle storage area. And then this thing does technically have the option for an upgraded speaker system. And it's kind of funny because you can see where the little badge should be along the door, but this is just the basic speaker system instead. Oh, when we get to the audio test, you'll be able to hear it, but it still is really nice at the same time. And like even all these small highlights, we've got this weave texture on top, which follows through the center stack there too, which is kind of nice. I like it. Now, just by our left knee, we've got a series of buttons. So we've got one in order to turn the bed lining on for the vehicle. There's one for a release for the gas tank too. Now that's because this is the hybrid version of the vehicle. But if we were just in the regular 2.5 liter, we just wouldn't have that available as an option. We've got a little selector switch to figure out what's going on with our running lamps. And I always just recommend to leave it in the auto setting. It's going to automatically turn the lights on or off as necessary, just depending on how bright it is outside. And then there's another one, a plus minus button in order to be able to figure out what's going on with the brightness of the little cluster screen and that sync media screen. Next up, let's take a peek at the steering wheel of the vehicle. So first and foremost, if you ever get a warning message on the screen, you just press the OK button in the middle there in order to get rid of any messages that might be there. So starting off with the pad on the left hand side, and this is going to be for our base cruise control. So we can turn the cruise control on easily. We can set it as necessary. Now, one thing to note, we do have the option for the adaptive cruise control when we get into the Lariat luxury package. So it's not going to be standard inside of the regular Lariat. We have to go for the Lux package in order to get that feature. Feature. We can easily adjust our volume. We can mute it from there as well if we wanted to. Off to the right hand side, we can change between songs or radio stations. One of the great things is that we can actually push and hold there as well if we wanted to seek between different stations that way. So you at least have a few different ways that we can kind of seek between different stations and things like that, switch between active presets, etc. So a lot of flexibility there. This button is also going to be the one where we can either answer or hang up at a phone call. We do have our phone voice command voice prompt. Requires a connected phone. All right. So as of right now, because we are in the base version of the Lariat as well, we don't have the sync three system with the added enhanced voice support, which would give us the option of doing things like changing radio stations, making phone calls and things like that using our voice. So when we're in the base versions of the vehicle, this command prompt is actually going to give us the flexibility to use Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, specifically our assistance. So if we were hooked up through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, we could use this as our Apple CarPlay, so our Apple Assistant, so Siri, or we could use it as our Google Assistant button there instead. These buttons are going to let us figure out what's going on with that cluster screen. And then we do have a few different options for the screen itself. The screen size is going to depend on which trim level of the vehicle you're looking at. Because we're in the Lariat, we do have a 6.5 inch screen. When we're in the XO, XLT, et cetera, it's gonna be a 4.2 inch cluster screen standard instead. But looking at some of the basics, this is gonna be our basic back button. This is gonna let us go up and down between different screens. And then this is our generic menu button. This, the one that lets us go between different screens, if we press the OK button, that's literally going to let us reset any settings and jump into little other menus and things like that. So starting off, we are on our fuel economy. So we press and hold OK in order to be able to reset our economy. Boom, reset. Dropping down, we've got our trip counter, tire pressure. We've got our AM, FM, so whatever station's currently playing. And then pressing the menu button there is going to bring us into this subscreen menu where we can select different screens so we can have a calming screen show up where there just wouldn't be anything on the screen instead. 
We've got our intelligent all-wheel drive, trailer light check, seat belts, auto start stop, and a few other things. So if we add in a few, I think we can maybe add in one or two more. Let's go seat belts. Okay, there we go. And then we jump back, jump back again. And then as you can see, we've got our seat belts there. We've got our FM, we've got the calming screen. So it gives us our digital speed along the bottom right hand side. And then we're, we don't have much of the same distractions that we'd see in some of the other options there. So we look, so if you're just not a fan of having as many, as many distractions, we can easily go into the calming screen there instead if we wanted to. We do have our audio buttons there as well, so we can jump between AM, FM. If our phone was connected, that would show up as an available source. If we had a USB stick with MB3s, that would show up as an available source there as well. Dropping down, we've got our phone. So as of right now, no phone connected. But if it was connected, we could make phone calls and things like that as well by simply selecting that option. Moving into settings, we've got a few different options that are available there as well. So we've got our trailer sway control, which is great because if the vehicle senses that there's sway going on in the trailer, it's automatically going to apply engine braking in order to get that sway under control. We've got some driver assistance settings, so quite a few of them. We've got our blind spot system, so that lets us know if anybody's under the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. Cross traffic alert, so if the vehicle senses something's coming perpendicular, it's going, as we go to reverse, so somebody's coming off from our left or right side, it's gonna warn us and let us know of a potential collision. We've got our driver alert setting, and that's the one where if, we, it's actually tied into the lane keeping, but if we get too many notifications because we're veering over too many times without signaling, we're gonna get a message letting us know we should probably take a break. Now on the lane keeping system, so we do have a button just on the very tip of that left turn stick there. You can just make it out. But that's the one that's actually going to turn that lane keeping system on or off. So we can see it's on whenever we have those lanes showing up there. Now the system might be on, but it doesn't actually activate until we hit about 60 kilometers an hour. So these lanes are going to go green when it recognizes the markings, and then it's literally going to keep us bouncing our lane. So it's not a full lane centering with this base system, but it's at least a base lane keeping system. So three different ways. We've got our alert, which is going to give us a little bit of a steering wheel shake, our aid, which is going to nudge us back into our lane, and our alert and our aid, which will do both. Moving back, it's the intensity of that steering wheel shake. Then we've got our pre-collision assist system with active braking. So if the vehicle senses a potential collision, it can actively brake for us as well. And that's gonna be the basics of driver assistance. We've got some vehicle settings so we can lock it out for a 30 minute max idle. We've got some other lighting options, so our auto lamp delay, high beams, etc. The auto high beam is an interesting one because with our beams on, if the vehicle recognizes that there's an oncoming vehicle, it's going to dim them, turn them off, and bring them right back to life again for us. And then the auto lamp delay, when we go to lock the vehicle, how long do the lamps stay on for? We've got a few different options for our locks. The big one here is gonna be our remote unlock. So when we go to remote unlock, do all doors become unlocked or just the driver's door? We've got our switch inhibitor as well as our intelligent access, which if on the outside of the truck, we slide our hand in behind the door handle, it's actually gonna unlock the doors. It's not available in any, every trim level, but is available in the Lariat as an option. We've got our oil life reset remote start. So the key fob itself doesn't have remote start built in, but we do have the flexibility of still remote starting using our app, our phone, if we wanted to. So we'd be able to use the Ford Pass app on our phone, whether that's an Android or an iPhone, in order to remote start that way. We've got the duration of the, ooh, we've got the climate there. I should actually start off there. So is that going to let the vehicle determine what the cabin temperature should be, or is it going to be based off of our last setting? The duration of the start, is it 5, 10, or 15 minutes? And then we can turn the whole system off if we wanted to. Wipers, we've got our courtesy wipe, which if we've got our windshield wipers go, oh, this stick, if we've got our windshield wipers going, and then we have the courtesy wipe on, what'll happen is at the end of our wipe cycle, it'll wait a second, and then it'll go one more time to get rid of any sort of excess liquid that might be on the windshield. And moving back, that's gonna be the basics for our vehicle. My key, similar to a lot of other Ford vehicles, we can easily set up a key with certain limitations. So if you wanted to have it where you couldn't speed excessively, you could literally have it so a specific key fob can only go maybe up to 100 kilometers an hour. So you do have the flexibility of easily setting up your My Key if you wanted to. And that's gonna be the basics of our settings there. Moving back, we have our display setup. So we can show miles or kilometers per hour on the bottom right hand side there. We can switch between a few measurement units. So if you prefer miles per gallon, Celsius Fahrenheit, we've got a few different options for how we're gonna have our tire pressure displayed. And then we've got our language where we can switch between either English, Spanish, or French. And that's gonna be the basics of the actual screen itself. Hopping back out, we're back into our main pages there. So as I mentioned, this is gonna be the button that's gonna let us go between individual screens. And then we can just press and hold the okay button in the middle there in order to go between different options as well. 
Now, stick on the left-hand side, I had mentioned it earlier, there's a button on the very tip of the stick. That's going to turn the lane keeping system on or off. We can easily flash our high beams, whereas the stick on the right-hand side is going to give us the flexibility to adjust our wiper speed as well, and then we can pull in towards us to get that front wiper fluid going if we wanted to. The steering wheel inside the Maverick is going to be telescopic, just by our left knee, in and out, up and down, and it's manual telescoping. So we don't have the option for a power steering wheel inside of this thing whatsoever. But one interesting change from 22 to the 23 is that the XL, so the base trim level of the Maverick, now will also have cruise control available standard. So that's something that wasn't available in the 2022 model on launch. So it's kind of cool it's available here. Now, seat comfort is another thing. So I mentioned, so this is the XLT. I like the Navy, like the pier type of interior here. This is really neat looking. Like this multiple tone color. I, it's funky looking, but it's kind of neat all at the same time. Nice. Seat, it's surprisingly comfortable. Headrest is just a two way, so an up and down. And then for the, for like most part, like, well, I shouldn't say for the most part, the XL and the XLT, we're going to have just regular manual seats, but we do have the option for power seats because this one has one of the added luxury packages. So you do have the option for power seats inside of this, and that's forwards, backwards, up and down. You can adjust our backrest, and then we've got two-way lumbar support that are power as well. Really useful. But so the seat comfortability is great with the seat. All the way down as far as it's gonna go. I've got a boatload of headspace here. <laughs> like what, six inches ish of headspace, and I'm six feet tall, so I mean, if you're taller than that, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, you'll probably be able to comfortably sit inside of this thing. But seat comfortability is actually pretty good. It's good. It's good. All right, next up, taking a peek at the media screen for the vehicle. So we actually do have two screen choices that are available. It's either just going to be this base screen, or we've got the option for Sync 3 with the enhanced voice recognition. It's available in some of the packages, but this is just going to be for the base screen by itself. So we've got our station that's currently playing. We can pair a device, and then we've got some other basics along the top. This is going to be our home button. We've got our time that's currently going, current temperature, whether or not we're connected through data, etc. And then whether or not we've got our 911 assist set up, which as of right now, we don't. So we're going to go through each option here, starting off with our audio tab along the very bottom. First off would be our sources. So we've got our AM, FM, or Bluetooth. So if we were hooked up using our cell phone, we would have Bluetooth audio as one of the available options. If we had a USB stick with MP3s, that would also show up as an option there as well. Moving back, we can tune a few different ways. So we've got a tuning rocker there. We can also direct tune this way as well. So we can just type in a station if we wanted to. We just hit enter and we're turned on. But looking along the very bottom, we've got a series of different presets. We can literally just press and hold any of the available spots in order to save that preset in. So a preset is now saved and it really is that simple. Next up, looking at our phone. So we've got a few different ways we can add in a phone. We can do it just on that screen. If we were on this screen, we could just pair device or on the main screen. So we've got our settings there and we can jump into our phone or Bluetooth there as well to add in a different device. So setting the device up is actually super simple. So first step, what we're going to do is literally just hit add Search phone. Search for Fort Maverick on your device and select Fort Maverick once it is found. Okay, and we're literally we're waiting for Maverick and we're just going to press that. Confirm that the pin displayed on Ford Audio matches the pin displayed on your device. Okay, so we want to make sure these add up, and they do, so pair and yes. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions while your vehicle is in motion. Okay, so what we want to do is make sure that we allow contacts, and we want to turn on 911 assist as well. The big reason why is because if the vehicle senses a collision and you're hooked up over Bluetooth, it's automatically going to die on 911 for you. But as you can see, we've got, so contacts are now downloaded, but we've got my phone, we've got Siri, do not disturb mode, we've got my keypad and a number of other things. So phone is now connected and it literally is that simple. If we go into settings here, we jump into phone, we've got some more advanced ones. So we can look at Bluetooth devices, we can manage my contacts, look at text messaging, we've got our roaming, roaming warnings and a number of other things. Now, one nice thing is that this vehicle also does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay support. So we don't have factory navigation inside of this thing, but we can take our USB cable, put it into the available USB port in front of us there. Opposite end, we're just gonna plug ourselves in and Apple CarPlay. So we just wanna hit continue there. We have to agree. Do we want to allow CarPlay while the, while the phone itself is locked? Yes, so we want to allow. And as you can see there, 
fully connected and it literally is that simple. We at least have some map support there. So we've got our Apple Maps, we've got Google Maps, we've got Waze. We can use them all through this middle screen. Now the screen itself is fairly responsive so we can easily move out as necessary there. Moving back, as I mentioned, we do have a few other map applications that we can jump through. Now, when we're hooked up through CarPlay, we can press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, and that's gonna launch our Siri Assistant there as well. So we can have that launched if we want to. Jumping back, this brings us back to the main screen here. Now, we do have the flexibility to be able to customize the screen layout as well if we wanted to. So on our phone, if we jump into, so we're gonna start off with CarPlay, look at Ford Maverick, and then we can customize it and we can literally just do a drag and drop. So if you have some things that you wanted to listen to instead, you can easily set that up if you wanted to. We can easily delete some things. It'll store it at the very bottom if we wanted to do that. But if we've kind of played around too much and we don't like the way it looks, we can just do a reset in order to bring it back to our factory default screen there instead. Moving back, as you can see, we're now fully connected again. So we do have the flexibility of just jumping back here, pressing Ford Audio, and that's gonna jump us back into this main screen. But all of a sudden, we've got maps because we're connected through CarPlay now. So we've got few, a number of options, and one of the cool things is that we can still use the radio here. Well, I don't actually have a station on. There we go, so let's go AM, FM, etc. Actually, let's go this station. So we could technically run through our audio if we wanted to while we're still connected through Apple CarPlay. So you don't have to worry about strictly using your phone's audio if you didn't want to. And then jumping back to the main screen here, we can press Ford Audio to jump us back to this main screen. We can jump back into CarPlay. We can go to settings here, jump across, and we've got Apple CarPlay preferences. So we can turn CarPlay off. We can remove my phone as well if we wanted to. So if we remove, remove, and as you can see there along the bottom, it's now completely disconnected, but I'm still charging up there as well, which is nice. All right now, setting up an Android device is literally the exact same process. So as you can see there, we are still connected to the Apple device, so we can reconnect through Bluetooth if we wanted to, or Search we can simply add a phone. Maverick on your device and select Ford Maverick once it is found. I love that. Maverick. So good. So good. All right. And then what we're doing is we're just going to wait until there we go. Ford Maverick shows up and we're just going to hit Ford Maverick there. Confirm that the pin displayed on Ford Audio matches the pin displayed. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions while your vehicle is in motion. Okay, so we are now fully connected there. So as you can see, we've got a few other options. We've got our phone assistant. We've got our keypad there as well. So very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side of things. Now, one other thing is different. We've got our change device here now because we've got multiple devices connected. So we can easily press that in order to be able to select which phone we want to connect to. We can jump in, we can disconnect, we can make it our favorite, or we can completely remove any of these phones if we wanted to. So I'm connected to the Galaxy, so let's hop into the iPhone for a second. So we can connect the phone, media, make it a favorite, or we can remove it if we wanted to. And three, two, one, it is that simple in order to be able to set a phone up and delete it from the vehicle. But very similar to the iPhone side of things, we do also have Android Auto support. So we're gonna take our USB cable, we're just gonna plug it in, and opposite end of the cable, and we're just going to plug ourselves in there as well. And Android Auto, so quick. Just hit continue there, we have to agree. And Android, I would like to turn on Bluetooth to sync, so we're gonna hit next. And a few seconds here, launching in, three, two, one, and we are fully connected. So as you can see, they're fully connected here. We've got our map preferences along the bottom there. We've got our Google About. We can go between different traffic sources, guidance options, and things like that. And then very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side, if we press and hold OK in the middle there, so you can see we've got our Google Assistant showing up as well. Notification Center, get back into our Google Assistant, hop inside to the main Android Auto menu. So very similar, as you can see there, we do have some flexibility. We've got our Google Maps, we can customize things. Now we do have the flexibility of being able to customize on the Android Auto side of things. We're just gonna search for Android Auto, and when we do, we've got our settings menu there, and we're just gonna look at our customizable launcher, and we can customize, so we can do a drag and drop. Any changes that we make here, we do actually have to relaunch Android Auto for them to take into effect. So it's not the same as Apple, where it's dynamically gonna update. We do have to manually go in in order to make those changes. But we still do have the option of customizing the launcher if we want to. We've got our Google Voice detection, which is great, so we can say, hey Google, and it launches into our Google Assistant. We've got a few other things, so our Google Assistant there, we can disable weather if we wanted to, and we've got a few other options. Now, one thing to note, we are wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay inside of this vehicle. We don't have the option for a wireless connection at all, unfortunately. 
and we jump back, we hit exit there in order to jump back out to this main sync screen. We can jump directly into the maps because we're connected through Android Auto. We can hop back into Android Auto, look at our base preferences there where we can remove the phone if we wanted to. So we are charging this phone while we're connected there as well. So device not responding, which makes sense because I don't act, I disabled Android Auto on this thing. So it totally makes sense there. But as you can see, we are still connected to the Galaxy. And then like what we saw on the iPhone side, if we jump into our settings, into phone, we can manage devices, we can look at a few things as well. So it is that simple setting a phone up to this vehicle. Next up, jumping into our app. So certain mobile apps will work through this middle screen, specifically in the iPhone side of things, ones that I can think of would be Pandora and LiveX Live. So we can be connected through Bluetooth and those would show up as our available apps. Jumping into our settings, we've got a series of other options. So starting off, we've got our sound settings. So we can change out our treble mid-range bass. We've got our balance fade there as well. So we can adjust where it's actually sitting. We can recenter it. We've got our speed compensated volume, so it's automatically going to adjust the volume based off of how fast we're going. Occupancy mode, same idea. We've got our clock, which we can jump in by pressing the clock along the top there instead. But as you saw there, we can change between hours, minutes, Bluetooth, so we can turn Bluetooth on or off. We can change the vehicle name. So if you wanted to customize it so that it's your own name instead of Ford Maverick, you could do that. We could add in devices or view connected devices as well. So as you see there, we still are connected through that Galaxy. We'll go back in just one second to a phone as well because it gives us the same options. So we do have a few things there. We can look at our Bluetooth devices again, hop in, up in and we can disconnect or we can completely remove it. Removing three, two, one, it is now disconnected and both phones are fully removed from the vehicle. Moving back again, we do have radio. So we do have a few different preset pages that are available there. I always recommend just maxing it out and going into six available presets. And the big reason why is because we go back home and now we've got up to 30 individual presets there. So if you're a heavy audio listener, you can at least have a mix of AM, FM, etc. Moving back, we've got some, again, mobile apps, which some of them will work over USB, so we can enable certain ones to work over USB. The vehicle itself is equipped with a Ford Pass Connect modem, which means that we can use it in order to be able to use it as a wireless hotspot. So if we had a data-only plan through our cell phone provider, we could use it to connect up to 10 devices. We've got some general settings, so we can change between English, Spanish, French. We've got our different temperature units. Touchscreen beep, so it's actually turned off, but if it was on, so the beeping that we're getting there, if that drives you nuts, you could turn it off. We can reset a few different ways as well. So we can reset Ford Pass Connect only, or we can do a full master reset. Next up, we've got our 911 Assist, which I always recommend keeping that one turned on so that it dials 911 if it recognizes you're in an accident. We've got our Wi-Fi, so we can easily connect to a Wi-Fi network at home. And we've got our system updates, so auto updates. Definitely recommend turning automatic updates on with our Wi-Fi at home. And the big reason why is because if the vehicle senses that there's an available update, it's automatically gonna download it for us. Android Auto Preferences, so as you see there, it's still showing that the Galaxy is connected. So we're just gonna remove that one and Android Auto is now gone. So that's one of the nice things because by removing these things, it does clean up the tray. And then when we go to plug in through USB again, they will show up again. We've got some other vehicle settings. We've got a door keypad code that is available optionally inside of this. Certain trim levels will have it, but it's a five digit number in order to get inside of the vehicle if we don't have our fob on us. And we can easily add in multiple codes if we wanted to do that as well. We've got our display there. So our display is big and as nice as this thing is. If it's too much, we can turn the whole thing off. Button press to bring it to life. We can jump into a calming screen where it just shows the time and our current statuses. Button press to bring it back again. Jumping back into our display, we've got our background, brightness, and then we've got a few different modes. So as of right now, so this is in the auto mode, but we can switch so that it's permanently in the day or the nighttime mode, depending on whether or not you like the look of one or the other. Auto mode means it's gonna flip between day or night, depending on how bright it is outside. And then we've got our ambient lighting. So we do have only one available choice for the ambient light color, but we do have the flexibility of being able to adjust how bright it is if we want to. But this is nice. So this is the base audio system inside of this. This isn't the upgraded one. And like the sound inside of this thing is so good. I love the song. I love the band, but the sound inside of this, like even the bass sound, it's so, so good. It's, it's ridiculously good. And like, obviously this is a little bit of a smaller cabin, but it's not gonna be as deep of a bass as we look at when we get into the upgraded system. This is still pretty good though just under the screen we've got our volume rocker tuning rocker there are a series of other buttons so one for for blinkers we've got another one to pull up some audio settings and a number of other things down there as well 
We are going to be single zone climate control inside of this thing. So single zone, super straightforward to adjust. And one cool thing, when we adjust the temperature and the fan speed, it actually shows up right through that media screen to what level we're at. Useful, kind of cool. We've got a series of other buttons. Ooh, is that heated side view mirrors? How did I not even notice that before? Eh, we've got a button for heated side view mirrors inside of this thing. There is the option for heated first row seats and a heated steering wheel on top of that. So that's ultimately gonna depend on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. But I mean, having that heated steering wheel, heated seat, super useful for winter time. I like it. And then one really cool thing is that on the key fob, so we don't have remote start built into the fob and the XL, XLT, et cetera, but we do have Ford Pass. So we'd be able to hook up through our phone and we could remote start that way instead if we wanted to. So preconditioning cabins, all that fun stuff. Moving down the center stack, we've got two USB ports. So traditional USB, there's a USB-C, and then there's also a 12 volt power point down there too. From there, we also do have a few, oh, that's so neat. We've got this orange cutout, and I mean, you could use it for phone storage if you wanted to on the right side, and then just kind of dropping down here as well. Lots of storage there. Moving down, we've got our rotary dial shifter knob. So a lot of Ford vehicles have kind of shifted from like your traditional shifters into this rotary dial instead. But one nice thing here is that we do have our low gear. So park reverse neutral drive and a low gear. Shooting across, we've got a few cup holders. There's a parking brake electronic, which is nice. We've also got this little button in order to change between different drive modes. So we've got five different modes available. We've got normal, tow, slippery, eco, and then my favorite, sport mode. So it's just gonna hold on to the RPMs a little bit more to give you a little bit more of an aggressive feel to it. We've got a traction control button and then one for our auto hold setting. And the auto hold setting is the one where if we take our foot off the brake, it's gonna hold us in place. Kind of useful. A few little storage trays there. We also do have a little armrest with nothing inside, just a decent amount of storage space. Not bad. Non-lockable inside of this thing too. But up overhead, we've actually got like surprisingly good visibility for the dash here. It's kind of nice. Pillars don't block things out too, too much. Nothing out of the ordinary. Up overhead, we do have our manual dimming rear view mirror there. From there, we've got some controls for our cabin lights. Little sunglasses holder, typical Ford styling. And then the visor has a little business card holder on the inside and the outside there. We've got our visor with a vanity mirror built in. And this thing doesn't have lights available as an option there. But this thing extends out, blocking all of the sun that might be hitting our face, which is great. I like it. And it's actually like when it's extended there, it's pretty, like it's, it's not flimsy much. Like it's got a little bit of give to it, but it's fairly sturdy. I was actually in a transit connect a couple weeks ago and like when that it's beefier but when it was extended it was it had like a little bit more give than I was probably comfortable with but still though nice now along the driver's side we don't have any sort of an assist handle but we do have one on the passenger side and then we do have them for the second row seats too but this is nice we've got our glove box down there too with a tiny little bit of storage space not bad I like all the orange highlights though you don't find any orange highlights up on the dash, but like I said, the vents all have the little orange highlight there along the door through the center stack. It's pretty, pretty neat. I like it. But what I'm gonna do, I set the driver's seat up for somebody who's six feet tall. Let's hop back to that second row and see what's going on space-wise. Well, <laughs> so second row of the Maverick. All right, here we go. So, initial impressions. I like all of the same highlights that we see back here. Like these seats, they look really, really neat. I kind of like it. But some things to consider. So the seat cushion, it's not too shabby. Like it's not obviously as comfortable as the first row seats, but it's all right, wiggle test, it's there. And I've got a good amount of headspace back here too. Like I said, I'm six feet tall and I've got like three and a half, four inches of headspace up overhead there, which is great. But the seats here are locked into place. So unlike the Escape where we've got seats we can move forwards and backwards in the second row, these ones lock down. Not bad though. But I like, like I said, all the highlights. We've got this like kind of diamond texture along the door, which is the same as we saw in the first row. 
We've got that same handle, window control, bottles, and things like that. But some basics. We do have behind the armrest here, so two USB power points, and then there's also a traditional 400 watt inverter here. So we've got a 400 watt power plug here. We've also got one in the bed of the truck. So which power plugs you get are going to depend on how you have the vehicle configured. Like, are you in the XLT, the Lariat? Do you have the luxury package in the XLT? So tons of things to consider there, but other things we do have ugh, some cup holders right in the seat there, which is really useful both the driver and the passenger side. We've also got some assist handles. So assist handle driver passenger side in the second row and a little clothing hook on top of that. Overhead, we've got a little light there too, but it's really simple, like basic back here. We've got some speakers along the outside there. That's really about it. Like there's not much back here, which I mean, nice and simple, which is a good thing. We do have a little pocket along the passenger side seat and then all of our anchors and tethers and things like that. So our anchor points are really easy to get to. The tethers, we actually need to crank this <laughs> and pull it forward in order to be able to get access to the tethers. But the tethers are there throughout. So we've got the three that are available. And then we've also got our jack stand right in the back, right underneath the seat there. It's there. So if you ever need to change a tire, you've got that flexibility. But it was nice. And like I said, like tons of space here, which is great. And then we've also got a few different ways we can get under the seat here. So we've got some seat storage, which is super useful, but I'm actually, I'm gonna have to hop outside in order to show you this, but it's pretty cool at the same time. So along both the driver passenger side, we've got a little tab and what we wanna do. So very straightforward, we've got a tab here. We're gonna pull and when we do, we can actually lock this thing up into place, which I mean, it's super useful to be locked up because if we have things underneath here, we just don't worry about this thing dropping down on us. So really useful. And then in order to close it, all we're gonna do, lift, drop, straightforward. But we've got a tiny little bit of storage on both the driver passenger side. Not a ton, but I mean, it's just enough in order to store a few things under, under the seat, which is pretty useful. It's nice. Filling up fuel inside of the Maverick is also very straightforward. So it's just along our driver's side. When we're in the hybrid, this is actually a locked cover and that's just got to do with depressurization. When you're in the regular gas version, this is unlocked. But getting inside for the hybrid, little button press there, fuel door is open. So nice and simple, capless system. And doesn't matter if we're looking at the 2.5 liter hybrid or the two liter turbo, Regular 87 fuel is all we need to use inside of this thing. But the horsepower and torque specs that we were looking at under the hood are all achieved using a premium fuel. So do you need to use a premium fuel? Not technically, but if you want the best possible performance, ideally you want to use like an 89. 91 is your best bet though, just not necessary. Towards the back end of the Maverick, a few things are standard. We've got our Ford Blue Oval. There's a backup camera there. We've got our Maverick badge. And then because this is the hybrid, we've got a fancy little hybrid badge along the bottom left-hand side. This specific one I mentioned has the XLT luxury package, which means that we do have our four pin provisions there. We've got our regular hitch receiver on top of that. When we look at towing inside the Maverick, we're either gonna get 2000 or 4,000 pound towing capacity. You're maxing it at 2000 pounds inside of the hybrid and you're going in order to get that 4,000 pound capacity, you need to have the two liter turbocharged engine. So it still is respectable, like 4,000 pounds towing inside of this thing. And that's even the same way, like if you're looking for the four seven pin provisions on top of that, you do need to have that 4K tow package instead. One other thing to consider is going to be payload inside of this. So when we look at the Maverick, we're maxing out at 1,500 pound payload capacity, but that also depends on how the rest of the vehicle is built out. The yellow payload sticker on this one, I believe we're maxing out at around 1400 and change, like 1474, I think is the exact number. So everything you have in the vehicle, the weight of the hitch, anything that you've got in the bed of the truck, passengers, things like that, is all gonna subtract from your maximum allowable payload. So it's something to consider. Now, ugh. getting inside of the bed of the Maverick is very straightforward. Now, a few things about this thing. Inside of the Maverick, we're strictly looking at a four and a half foot bed. Like we don't like box size. We don't have the option for anything that's gonna be longer 
You could technically do a little extender if you wanted to get that extra space when you have the tailgate down. But if you're looking for something bigger, the Ranger is going to be a five or a six foot box. And then you've got the F-150 for up to an eight foot box. So if this isn't enough space, you don't have a choice but to look at the Ranger instead. Now, this one has the plastic liner that's available right from the factory. You do have the option to go spray in route instead. I personally recommend the spray in, but I go through Linex instead. That's what I normally recommend. It's about twice as thick as the factory liner and it has a lifetime warranty. But that one's a matter of preference. And whether you get the drop in plastic or spray in, you know it's from Ford because we've got a Ford logo right along the very back of the bed there as well. But some basics back here. You're gonna have a few different features depending on if you're in the XLT, the Lariat, and then what packages you've added on. Because this one has the option for bed lighting. So we've got lighting down here, we've got bed lighting along the top, and then we've also got a 400 watt inverter back here, which is really useful if you wanna be plugging some things in. I know we've got that hybrid component of it, but it is cool to know that we've got that available as an option. One other cool thing along the right side, we've also got a little cubby storage on top of that. Now it does have a 20 pound max capacity, but if you want to build the bed out and do some things, you've got that flexibility. And that's for along the side and then even other components of the bed. Like if you wanted to drop in two by fours and kind of build this thing out a little bit more, you would have that flexibility. And that's why I would recommend looking at the drop in line or the spray in bed liner instead, because when we get the drop in, it covers up some really useful components, but you've got the option for tonneau covers like soft rolling, hard rolling, trifold, etc. You can cap this thing out as well. It's going to be a matter of what do you need out of your vehicle. Now, one other thing is spare tire. So inside of the Maverick, you do have the option for a spare tire because the packages we've added on, we've got a full size spare that's located just underneath the vehicle. So really useful. And then our jack stand is just in behind the second row seats. And that was a look at the 2023 Ford Maverick. Now, this one was the XLT hybrid, but Still nice functionality all at the same time. If you have any questions though, you ran into any problems, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. More than willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having. If you're looking for a Maverick or any other Ford or Lincoln vehicle, you have to connect with Formula Ford. They'll be able to help you out. But if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up, share it with somebody if you think they might find it helpful. And until I see you next time, take care.